Nam Han San Song is a mountain fortress located in Guangzhou in Gyeonggi province, bordered by the cities of Hanam and Songnam. It's less than 25 kilometers away from Seoul, and the fortress offers a magnificent view of the mega city. Nam Han San means South Han Mountain, and Song means fortress. The fortress is 12.4 kilometers in length and sits around 500 meters above sea level. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2014. During the Joseon Dynasty, it was used as an emergency capital city. The fortress saw much defensive use throughout its history, be it by Baekje, Shilla, Goryeo, or Joseon. The fortress design also changed with time, especially with the development of weaponry and the use of military warfare using gunpowder imported from Europe. In Joseon, the fortress was meant to be self-sufficient with a temporary palace, administrative buildings, Buddhist temples, garrisons, ancestral shrines, altars for different deities, command posts, arsenals, pavilions, many natural springs, and, of course, houses. One particularity of the fortress is that the government officials and local lower-class citizens all live within its walls. Around 4,000 people live there at all times. Nowadays, it's a very popular tourist attraction, as well as a place where people actually live, so we now find cafes, restaurants, museums, a Catholic church, parking lots, and much more. It has been restored starting in the 1970s. The temporary palace was reconstructed from 2000 to 2010. Nam Han San Song's site served as a command post since the unified Shilla era in the 7th century. According to the Samguk Sagi, Zhujiang Song Fortress was built in Han Sanju in 672 during the reign of King Munmu. Han Sanju was a province during the unified Shilla era, equivalent to today's Gyeonggi-do province. It was built along the Han River to defend against Tang China's attack during the tang Shila War from 670 to 676. It consisted of 8 kilometers of fortified walls. During the Goryeo dynasty, the site was used to defend the nation during the Mongol invasions of 1231 to 1270. In 1624, Nam Han San Song was built as we know it today. Not long after, Joseon was invaded by later Jin in the beginning of the year 1627. Joseon was a tributary state of Ming and they had a friendly relationship, especially since Ming aided Joseon in repelling Japanese armies during the Imjin War from 1592 to 1598. The Ming Dynasty attacked the Jurchen, later Jin Dynasty, in 1619 and Joseon sent more than 13,000 troops to aid Ming. At the Battle of Sarha in present-day Fushan, in China's Liaoning province, the Allied armies lost. In 1623, King Injo was installed as king in a coup against King Guanghegun. The faction which put him there, the ultra-conservative Western faction, was pro-Ming and anti jurchen The Western faction came from a split of the Sarim faction between West and East, Sa-in and Dong-in respectively. Ming raided the Jurchens from Joseon positions with the help of Injo and the Western faction. The later Jin's new Khan, Hong Taiji, needed more territory and resources to fortify his position. He attacked Joseon in 1627. His army was led by the Ming defector Li Yongfang and Gang Hongrip, a former Joseon general who surrendered to the Manchus at the Battle of Sarha. He was tricked into believing that his family was killed by Injo and wanted revenge on Joseon. Pyongyang fell rapidly 
and Jurchen soldiers crossed the Taedong River without a fight. Injo fled in panic to Ganghua Island and negotiated a peace treaty. This was the second time that Ganghua was used by a Korean ruler as temporary capital. The first was when the Mongols invaded Goryeo during their second invasion in 1232. King Gojong of Goryeo moved the capital there from Kaesong. The Jurchen accepted the peace treaty on three conditions. Joseon stops relations with the Ming. Joseon offers a royal family member as hostage and both powers would not violate each other's territory. A big tribute was offered to the Jurchen. Many Joseon officials and Confucian scholars thought it was treacherous and unfilial for Joseon to abandon Ming, especially since Ming helped against Japan. Qing was declared a dynasty in 1636 by Hong Taiji, becoming the first emperor of the last Chinese dynasty. A year earlier, in 1635, he changed the name of the Jurchen ethnicity to Manchu. Qing accused Joseon of harboring fugitives and supplying the Ming army with grain. Also, Joseon didn't recognize the newly declared Qing dynasty. Furthermore, Qing demanded that Joseon become its vassal. Joseon refused, so Qing launched an attack in December of 1636. Qing previously attacked Ming and realized that Ming couldn't defend its border, so Qing made sure that Ming wouldn't be able to send reinforcements to Joseon. The capital, Hansong, present-day Seoul, was taken so quickly that King Ingjo couldn't retreat once more to Ganghua Island, where his second son and consorts were residing. That is when he decided to take refuge at Namhan Sansong, along with 13,800 soldiers. The Manchus laid siege to the fortress, but could never take it. Provincial forces around the country were mobilized to the fortress, including civilian militias and warrior monks, the Righteous Army. The Qing army succeeded in taking Ganghua Island and capturing royal family members. King Injo surrendered shortly after. Joseon agreed to Qing's demands, which were numerous. Joseon has to stop using the Ming era name, cut off relationship with Ming, and discard all books and seals received from Ming. Joseon has to offer the first and second son of Injo and sons and brothers of ministers as hostages. Joseon has to accept the Qing calendar. Joseon has to offer tribute. Joseon has to send troops, warships and supplies in the war against Ming. Joseon and Qing ministers should intermarry. Joseon can't harbor refugees and fugitives of Qing. Joseon has to get permission to expand and repair fortresses. Joseon has to resume trade with Japan, which would be beneficial for Qing. Until the rise in power of Japan in the 19th century and subsequent annexation of Korea, the Qing invasion was the most important event in Korean history for the many centuries that followed. Joseon's defeat at the hands of the so-called Manchu barbarians and subsequent humiliation of Joseon kings stayed in the collective mind of the nation. Some Joseon scholars thought that Joseon should have been the legitimate successor of the Ming and not the Qing barbarians. So Joseon had a defiant attitude towards Qing for most of its history. Namhan Sansong kept its original function until Japanese colonial times, when it became an isolated mountain village following the destruction of its military capacities. Nowadays, a lot was reconstructed, and it's a popular tourist attraction and hiking spot away from the hustle and bustle of the city. There is one tale about the fortress that stands out for me. The Tombstone of Sa Hunnam. When King Injo retreated to Nam Han Sansong, many of his vassals ran away. The few remaining ones took turns carrying the king on their backs. On a cold winter day, when everyone was exhausted, a woodcutter, 
Sang Hun Nam, appeared and offered to carry the king on his back to the fortress. Shortly after, Injo summoned the woodcutter, thankful for his help, and asked him what he desired. The woodcutter only wanted to wear the king's royal attire. Injo gave it to him. During the war, Sa Hun Nam spied on the enemy's movements and served the kingdom well. When he died, he was buried in the king's royal attire and passers-by would bow down when passing his tombstone. Sa Hun Nam was a perfect example of Confucian loyalty to the ruler. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and comment and subscribe if you like this video. Stay tuned for more videos on the rich history of Korea.